Hi, this is Zach Mir with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Vox Markets for Monday the 31st of January, starting off with Aminex, uh, where we're making, I suppose, good consolidation and progress at the same time, uh, holding above that top of the uh, trend channel there from March last year, around 105, uh, above the one penny area, looking for 1.5 over the next uh, six to eight weeks, hopefully sooner than that, especially while we remain above the one penny level. Moving along to a stock which I haven't covered for... Uh, quite a while and um, I suppose it's because it's a rather thin day at the moment uh, it gets uh, a mention here we've got Altin which has uh, gapped up through the triangle that's been in place since May and the 50-day moving average that's uh, looking pretty good above the uh, resistance line there broken from May at 121 we're looking to hopefully retest uh, at least the 140 to 150 area which is post September resistance only back below the gap there at 116, really uh, delaying the upside scenario, but it uh, looks as though the shares after that bear trap um, gap reversal at the beginning of the month are on their way. Moving along to another stock which doesn't get much uh, airtime, but is uh, here today on a quiet day. We've got uh, Active Energy and looking uh, interesting just on the basis of this uh, bullish divergence line that's been in place since December. Uh, giving the shares some push in terms of the upside. Obviously, if you're cautious, you maybe want to wait for an end-of-day close above the 50-day moving average, but obviously that would give away the upside, so you've got to assume that uh, the bullish divergence will get the shares up to that area, 0 0.24, 0 0.25, at least while there's no new low below one uh, below 0 0.15. Uh, the bullish divergence line, obviously not great if you have a very strongly downtrending stock, so we did see um, a limited upside there in October, November with that uh, bullish divergence line, but maybe it's second time lucky for the bulls. Onto a stock which is in a rather better technical state, and uh, maybe even fundamental state, we've got uh, Audio Boom here, uh, blink and you missed it, uh, test of the 50-day moving average, rising 50-day moving average around uh, £12.50. And above that, we're looking for not only a break of uh, recent resistance at uh, £16 plus, but also Big picture target, maybe over the next one to two months, as high as £24, which is the top of that broadening triangle there from this time last year. So uh, looking pretty well set there for audio boom at the moment, especially while we're above uh, the £14 area. But ideally, obviously, the stop loss there, uh, £12.50 for that situation. Long bullish divergence line there from August, so the trend uh, looks to be fairly well uh, firmly entrenched. And as you can see, the uh, latest support there for the shares was actually well above old resistance. Uh, old resistance around 11.50, the new resistance 12.50. When you have a, a gap between the uh, old support, new uh, old resistance and new support, that is an extra bullish um, factor for a stock or market. Speaking of old resistance and new support, uh, we've got uh, Global Petroleum. We're here. The old breakout level at 0.7 has been tested uh, as a new support, um, rather unfortunate perhaps that it had to retrace that far back to retest that, but uh, that can happen and very often does. So about, about 0.7, we're looking for a retest of the best levels of the other week at 103 and uh, the target that we've been chasing uh, since the 0.7 breakout, the initial one was uh, up to 1.3, which may be seen by uh, over well, I suppose over the next six to eight weeks, something like that, and hopefully a bit sooner. Stock which uh, uh, where maybe uh, angels might fear to tread after the recent history is uh, Polarian, but it looks like we're breaking that line of resistance from October um, after the bear trap below December support uh, that was around uh, 54 pence. So we went down to uh, 51 just to shake out the last of the week hands. We've got a bullish divergence line there as well, which is helpful. So an end of day close above uh, six, above uh, 60 pence should or could be enough to get the shares back up to the um, mid to low 70s over the next month or so, something like that. Uh, new CEO at uh, Powerhouse Energy and uh, interesting charting situation in the sense that you can see that uh, the shares have worked quite well in terms of uh, breaking near-term resistance lines so that worked in august it worked in october uh, november and hopefully now with a break of uh, 3.9 pence on an end of day close basis we'll at least get up to around 4.5 which is the 200 day moving average looks like we've got pretty good support there around 3.6 pence that's post October support, in fact, post-August support, apart from one day 
when we just blipped through that level. The other point to note is the RSI window where we've got a break of that RSI resistance line from November around the 45 um, level. Uh, anything on uh, f in terms of 50 plus, maybe the neutral level there, uh, an added bullish uh, kicker for powerhouse in the near term. Uh, the Aquas market, famous for its liquidity uh, at the moment, uh, probably as much liquidity as the Gobi Desert at the moment. But uh, here we have, uh, we're going to have a couple of stocks uh, from Aquas, which are actually moving and uh, look like decent situations. First one is Quetzal, where we broke a line of resistance uh, from March back at the end of December. That was around the 4.6 pence area. Since then, we've had a sideways shuffle uh, at, uh, well, in fact, above the 50-day moving average, which is rising, which is a plus. Also got a bullish divergence line, which was the reason for the call, or the bullish call in December around three and three and a half pence. That sort of worked so far. And uh, the view now is that um, probably a break of uh, the resistance line I'm just about to draw should get the shares on the move. So 4.9 plus on an end of day close basis should be enough to get the shares back to the 7p, 8p post June resistance area uh, that uh, perhaps peep holders of the stock have been waiting for for quite a while. Uh, more liquid situation, one might suggest, is uh, tertiary minerals, which I covered last week. Uh, here we've had a uh, bullish divergence line, which was uh, flagging the, uh, the way that the shares could be ready to uh, break higher when they were around 0 0.18, Decent close on Friday and then breaking above that resistance line today from June at uh, 0.21, above 0.21, looking for, I suppose, up towards the, the uh, 0.3 area, which is uh, post-September resistance as a minimum on the upside over the next uh, two to four weeks, or maybe even sooner. At this stage, only really well below 0.18, and the 50-day line really delaying the upside scenario for tertiary. Another uh, stock from Aquis, which uh, I suppose somebody has to cover these, uh, Valerium, which had, uh, I think, good news uh, at the close, well, near the close of play on Friday. Here we're in a symmetrical triangle that's been in place for, uh, I suppose, most of the uh, last year. Hoping for fourth time lucky, breaking that line of resistance from June. That's at 44 pence, so an end of day close through 44 should at least give us a retest of October resistance at 60 pence. Would be surprising now if there was any weakness um, anywhere uh, below the 30 pence level and a long bullish divergence line there from last February. So that should hopefully continue to give the shares f um, further momentum. I can't believe actually that uh, we'll have any, any more tests of the 30 pence area. I think we've done enough of those over the recent past. Finishing off with the uh, Expediator, which... Uh, Covered uh, a few times before. Uh, here we're breaking a line of resistance. I suppose uh, you could say the line there is uh, at the uh, 53 pence level. So an end of day close through 53 should be enough to give us at least a retest of November resistance at 63. Added momentum provided by that bullish divergence line there from the end of October and the gap through uh, that line of resistance, which uh, should be a, uh, provide uh, or should be a comfort to those looking for the shares to head higher and continue to head higher. Uh, so low 60s initially, and then maybe into the uh, the low 70s after that by the end of March, something around that time frame. A earlier back below 48 pence now, uh, delaying the upside scenario. That's it from me today. More updates tomorrow.